welcome, welcome, welcome to Evolutionary Church. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We are the Church of Evolutionary Love, where our mission is what Barbara and Mark have called, quote, a planetary awakening in love through a unique self-symphony. Each of us have a unique voice in this unique self-symphony. And if you are ready to step up and play a larger game with us and are ready to give of your heart and time and volunteer and write Dr. Mark or myself directly at uh, church, we're going to put uh, uh, information in the box so that you can do that. Um, I have stepped in leadership at church simply because I stepped forward and gave my heart and I receive back a thousand gifts every day. It's awesome. So please do join me. Together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. I am Christina Amalong, and it is so wildly good to be with everyone here today. I see Hans and Dodi and uh, Cherry, Zachary, Naomi, Tom, Jamie. We are from all over the world. And in Evolutionary Church, we are connected, we are whole, and we're expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity and we're awakening as a new species, homo amor. We are a church a synagogue, a mosque, a temple, a zendo. We're all of it and no one is excluded and everyone is included. And we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse awakening within us. Welcome home everyone. It's so wonderful to be with everyone in week 159 of Evolutionary Church. If you haven't already opened up your chat box, and say hello and let us know where you're from. And do make sure that your chat setting is on all panelists and attendees and not just all panelists so everyone can see what you're saying. As always, spread the evolutionary outrageous love. Let everyone know about Evolutionary Church. We're doing this primarily through word of mouth. I think I actually might have a couple new people here today. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. We are the Church of Evolutionary Love and all of our replays are available on our YouTube channel. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash evolutionary church. And we are live right now. And so if you go to your notifications, you can just hit share and that will allow uh, people on your Facebook feed to hear the Dharma today. We invite you to one act of outrageous love when you get off of church. We will talk in church today as we do every week about what it means to commit outrageous acts of love. And you will get an email to invite your friends. Who might you invite? And if email isn't intimate enough, give them a call. We talked last week in an amazing church after or meeting after church and we want you to know that every piece of unique language will be explained so it is even easier to invite your friends how exciting is that right we're going to dive deeper into the language of you know, the dharma with that i give you a little bit of what to expect over this next hour we always begin with the dharma recap for me pulling together some of the core memes that Dr. Mark and Barbara shared during the week before. And then Dr. Mark will set our intention and then David will do a resonance of the code that we're working with. After that, we move into prayer and then we move into our sermons for the day and we close around the top of the hour. The Dharma recap is a string of direct citations from Dr. Mark and Barbara from the past week's church. What I do, as Lisa did before me, is I find the most beautiful sentences that Dr. Mark and Barbara shared and collect them as the treasure they are as a recapitulation. These sentences grew out of their radical commitment over a hundred collective years, crystallizing the new story of humanity in these sentences. 
one day Dr. Mark will not be here. I hope Mark's transition is many decades from now. Barbara, unfortunately, hard to believe, is already not with us live every week. What a blessing though it is that her spirit is with us so strong, right? Every week is precious. Dr. Mark and Barbara, when she was here live, are bringing down stunning new formulations, which are literally, and I quote Dr. Mark and Barbara, quote, evolving the course of consciousness and culture, which is the source code of love, unquote. Our formal name, the One Church, Many Paths, One Mountain, is radically committed to telling the new story. So here goes our Dharma recap for this week. Our global crisis is a birth. Crisis is an evolutionary driver. Crisis means that someone or something is being left out of the circle. Every crisis at its root is a crisis of intimacy. But reality is always moving towards more intimacy. The God that desires, desires more intimacy. There's no one in reality left out of the circle. The solution to every crisis is new and deeper configurations of intimacy. Enlighten enlightenment means intimacy with all persons and all things. There's no part of us that's left out of the circle. There's no part of my story that's cut off. There's no part of me that's split off. The separate self is an illusion. The desire of reality has been from the very beginning to bring quarks and atoms and molecules and cells together to create new wholes. That's the continual movement towards a new evolutionary intimacy. That's a planetary awakening in love in unique self symphonies. If I leave myself out, if I leave myself in trauma, in the limiting belief, I split off those parts which are too painful to feel. When I leave myself in trauma, I'm afraid to go all the way in this lifetime and I do not access my unique voice. I can only find my unique voice. I can only speak my prophecy. I can only speak my prophecy of all of me is included and I have not ripped out pages from my book of life. It's all got to be inside of me. It's all got to be part of my story where every detour is a destination, where every rogue path is part of my rapture. We must find our way. Bring it all together, the holy and the broken, hallelujah. And with that, I invite us to more deeply enter into the holy and sacred space of evolutionary church. And I turn my word to you, Dr. Mark. Oh my God, thank you so much to Haley. Thank you, Christina Amelon, right? Our executive producer and creatrix right here in church, coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin. Friends, beloveds, it's so good to be with you. And I wanna make, if I can, with your permission, a couple of church announcements. So first, we promised that we were going to, I want to fulfill on, on three promises now. And it, it takes time. It's step at a time. And I, I want to give you one promise that I'm not out on the beach, that all of us were working 17, 18 hours a day, literally, with such delight. We could not be more delighted to be in this together, to be in this revolution. But a revolution takes all of us. It takes full-on commitment. And so we're committed here together. And so one, I'm super delighted to say that we're gonna do the next stage that we've been promising, the next stage of church, right? Kind of the huge next launch, January, this January, the new year. So that's happening, right? Big time resurrection happening. And Barbara's gonna talk with us about resurrection today, right? It's big time, it's a huge next step. So that's one. Two, next Saturday, Christina Amelon's gonna send out an email. We said last week, next Saturday, right after church, we're gonna have a, a kind of revolution meeting. So the one church, many paths, one mountain, right? This church of evolutionary love, we're gonna be getting together after church just to chat about 
what's happening and the possibilities and where people can step in. We had a first meeting like that right before the summer, if you remember. We said we'd have one in the fall. So next week, huge. Three, right? Church is going to move to Sunday, right? Church is going to move to Sunday, as we've been saying, right? Promising for about a year and a quarter. We're moving to Sunday. We got to work on the time. I think it'll be at the same time, right? Maybe we're thinking, should it be an hour earlier, right? And we want to take a poll on that. If people are going to a local church or a local service that they don't want to miss, we could maybe do it an hour earlier. We got to figure that out, okay? So church will in January move to Sunday. Yay. And I'm talking to my dear friend, right, who's our, our secret friend, right after church today, we'll be talking about new integrations. So it's just, it's happening big time. And it's happening, right, because it's utterly, wildly, crazily necessary, right? We are at a moment of crisis, and we're at a moment of birth. And our code for today, our crisis is a birth. But right now, before the code, we want to set intention. But before we set intention, two more announcements. And this is a big one. I was thinking this this morning, and I said it to a couple of dear, dear friends. You know, I've, I've said to myself, I've been surprised in a, in a beautiful way by how much I miss Barbara, right? Barbara and I talked not, not, not every day. We talked four or five times a day. We communicated for quite a few years. And we were so inextricably enmeshed in the evolutionary partnership, right? And the utter necessity at this moment between devolution and evolution to bring down this new possibility that it was a given that we were there for each other and that we could count on each other and we could, we could do this together. And Barbara actually, you know, and this is, this is tragic. She shouldn't have passed. She had years of life energy in her at the hospital. It had happened how it happened. And, you know, and I, I say this with, with, with really just a broken heart. You know, when I called her and you know, her last word, and I could just literally hear her saying today, Mark, Right, it was Saturday morning, right? Right afterwards, I got on church and, you know, in between, you know, in between times when I would talk or something else was happening in church, I was talking to the doctor and I, right after church, flew right to Loveland, Colorado to her bedside and she didn't wake up. You know, so I knew she was gone and I thought, okay, we're going to go on and we're fully committed and, and, and we're going to build and I, I've taken on the responsibility for the Foundation for Conscious Evolution but I didn't actually anticipate how much I would just miss, right? Barbara being with me and driving me out of my mind and, and challenging and our Holy of Holies that we did every week for years. And I'm, I'm super committed to continuing this partnership with Barbara. And I don't for one second believe that it's over when it's over, right? I'm a, a billion percent sure that that's not the case. I'm a billion percent sure that there's some form of continuity of consciousness that, that actually space time that we live in, right, is manifested out of consciousness and not the reverse. So that actually there's a continuity of consciousness beyond space time. So I'm absolutely sure that Barbara in a particular way and form is with us and we're continuing this conversation. And I wanna deepen that. I wanna deepen that conversation in a beautiful way. And so we promised last year Right, when we did the memorial service and thousands of us came together here in church that we would do two more celebrations. So we're going to do a small one, kind of a birthday celebration here in church for Barbara's birthday, which is going to be somewhere around December 20th. And then on the anniversary right, of Barbara's passing, you know, in Hinduism, they call it the Mahasamadhi. Right? In, in Judaism, it's called a Yortzeit. It's different names, but there's a moment when it's at the year after a person passed there's a particular moment where they're available, right? And the, right, the, the communication channels are open. So we're gonna be doing a kind of birthday celebration here in church, and we're gonna be doing a one year, you know, kind of big memorial service, right? You know, in, in April, right? The beginning of April. So I just wanna kind of share that with everyone and welcome everyone. Let's set our intention. Are we ready? Are we ready, friends? Are we ready? Are we ready? So let me just share with you, okay? So it's like this. We sing a song with God. The God you don't believe in doesn't exist. And I say at the beginning of church, everyone forgive me. Anything I get wrong or Barbara gets wrong, forgive us. Any way that right, we don't fit into, right, forgive us. 
but we're together. We're doing this together. The world desperately needs this revolution. You know, I read yesterday, and I have to not cry when I say this, I read a text that a girl sent to her mother. You know, they found right, a truck with 39 bodies. Right? And the bodies were of girls that were being transported. They were trying to get out of their country right, and get to freedom. But there was no air. And so the girl texts her mother and she says, I can't breathe. Right? Our dream of freedom isn't going to happen. Right? I'm sorry. Right? I love you. And that should never happen. No girl should ever be out of breath. Right? No one should be suffocated. If there's enough food in our world to feed everyone four times over. There's enough air for all of us to breathe into each other. And as you know, we were here in church, people here were seeing a movie, eating a donut. She was breathing her last breath. And she is us. And we are her. And until, right, I commit my last breath and we commit our last breath together to actually bring down the source code, we now understand the world's not made up of separate parts, right? The separate part Newtonian Cartesian science, which was so critical in the Renaissance, which took us forward, is now insufficient. We now understand that actually there are no separate things, that an atom itself is a probability wave of a relationship that the universe is, in our language, a love story, that we live in a cosmoerotic universe all the way up and all the way down, and that we breathe into each other literally. We literally breathe into each other. And the old, the crisis is the old win-lose metrics. And the old win-lose metrics are either number one or number two. That's not the case. And in Hebrew, the word echad, one, doesn't mean one as in number one. It means one as yichud, right? You're unique, you're, you're singular, right? Do you follow that with me? Right, the crisis, every crisis is a crisis of intimacy. And we feel like we're gonna be intimate if we're with the one and we're the one, and the one means we're number one, we're gonna make America great again and it's a win-lose metrics and America is gonna be great and we're gonna, we're gonna fight everyone else and we're gonna, right? No, 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 that's not how we trump in reality. No, no, no. Right? And, we, and, and it comes from, I remember I was with Ramdas, right? my, my dear friend, and we were in Maui a bunch of years ago and when George Bush was president and he had George Bush on his altar. And he says, I'm going to love George Bush because he's yearning also. So Donald Trump is on my altar. I think we need to do everything we can to remove him from office, not to degrade him, not to demean him, to remove him from office, period. Right? Because that's part of the constitutional process. And and I feel the brokenness of his heart. And I feel the yearning and I feel the emptiness in which only if I'm number one, only if I'm number one do I exist. No, no, it's not about being number one. It's about understanding that I'm the unique one. I'm the singular one. The crisis of intimacy is when we begin to understand that there's a planetary awakening in love through unique self symphonies and each of us plays our own irreducibly unique and gorgeous instrument of evolutionary love, giving our unique gift, singing our unique song, writing our unique poem, and being the dazzling light that only, only you, only you, only I can be. So I get to celebrate you, and you get to celebrate me, right? So that's what it means when there's a crisis of intimacy, there's a crisis of eros. It means we need to create new structures of intimacy, new structures of eros. And that's what this church is, one church. When we say one church, we don't mean one, right? Not one. And we have to actually explain that in a name. We, we immediately say one church, many paths, right? Each path is unique and beautiful and gorgeous, one mountain. Many instruments in the symphony, but we're all playing music. And if you can't breathe, my love, right? If you're 11 years old and you can't breathe and you're texting your mother because you can't breathe, right? And it's your last breath and it's my last breath. And it's my last breath, do you understand? We have to know that. We have to know that in our bodies. It's one world, right? It's one heart, right? It's one church. It's one nation, right? It's one love, right? One love, one heart. That's the evolution of love, right? That's the crisis of intimacy that we need to move beyond. So with, with, with so much gentle permission, I, I turn to all of us in our chat box, and I, I want to ask you just one question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to play a larger game? Are we ready to play a larger game, right? A true game, Barbara, beloved of one love, right? In one heart. 
Are we ready to participate to be the evolution of love? Are we ready to be a new configuration of intimacy where it's not about one, right, as a number one, but we're all singular and unique and we're all number one together in some way. And yet, right, we have all of our unique relationships with each other that are different, that are different. And, and we get to be, right? Do you feel that? Right? One is unique and singular, right? And beautiful, right? And gorgeous. Oh my God. Oh my God. We can do this. We can do this all the way, all the way. Yeah. So I turned to David, to beloved David, right? To resonate the code and resonate it with full heart right, and full power and full love. Dr. Mark, thank you so much. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Welcome everyone. Welcome. So oftentimes we, we have the same code over multiple weeks because every week we can deepen it and really experience it in a whole new way. So I'm going to read uh, the code and then I'll paste it in the, uh, in the box, the chat box here. And as I read it, I would invite everyone to think about how this shows up in our own lives, because I'm sure we all experience crisis after crisis after crisis, right? This week's code. Our crisis is a birth, personally and collectively, because crisis is an evolutionary driver. Every great crisis at its root is a crisis in intimacy. Crisis means that someone or something is being left outside of the circle. Enlightenment means intimacy with all things and all people. Enlightenment means that there are no externalities. The solution to every great crisis is a new and deeper configuration of intimacy. And I turn my word to you, Dr. Mark. David, oh my God. David, David, you are beautiful. Is David beautiful, everyone? Oh my God, All right? Yes, Christina Amelon, thank you for that gorgeous Dharma recap, Amor. The word is amor, the word is love. Solomon writes its insides are lined with love. Toho ratsuf ava. It's literally, not figuratively, not metaphorically, the mythopoetic universe emerges from the deepest understanding of the scientific universe, both the interior sciences, the direct experience of satori, of awakened enlightenment, and the exterior sciences, the very structure of the universe itself, it's all Amar. So we turn to you, beloved Mosa, and we're missing you, Mosa. We're missing you, right? Right, Mosa, take us all the way inside, love. Amar. Yes. Amor, 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 Amor. Amor, 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 Amor. Amor, 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 Amor. into prayer, right? We enter into prayer and we're about to bring on, oh my God, Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen, right? Leonard, a wild, holy man, right? From Montreal who's trying to find his way, 
you should see the documentary, Mary Ann and Leonard. It's an incredible documentary, right? And he was making mistakes. Leonard was filled with mistakes, but he was making mistakes in the right direction. And we turn to God and we understand that God is not only the infinity of power. God is not only the divinity that lives in us, as us, and through us, right? God is the infinity of intimacy that uniquely configures as us. God is the infinity of intimacy that holds us, right? Rumi says, I want to fall into the arms of the beloved, meaning, meaning God's not only the infinity of intimacy in us, but the infinity of intimacy who holds us, who we turn to, who knows our name, who holds our holy and our broken, hallelujah. And when we pray, we participate in the evolution of prayer itself. Prayer is not turning. Write the next sentence, anybody, right? Anybody in the chat box. Prayer is not turning to the cosmic. Give me the next sentence, right? It's your sentences, it's our sentences. Prayer is not turning to the cosmic vending machine, right, in the sky, owned by one religion, right, who says it's my God, it's my love, and my love means only me. No, right? God's not the God who's commodified and sold back, right? God is the infinity of intimacy that says, my, my, my Claire, right? My Mark, my Kirsten Zohar, my Nathan, right? Right, and that my includes all of us, and then God literally holds each of us individually and knows each of our names, and here's our voice, right, in the exact precise way. I was talking to my friend Zach and Derek last night. The same way I hear Zach's voice, because I'm intelligent, and I, right, and I'm, I've got this consciousness. I'm part of the field of consciousness. I'm part of the field of intelligence. So can you imagine I can hear Zach, but the field of intelligence of which I'm part can't hear him? No. No, no, no. The field of intelligence with all of its receptors hears Zach and knows Zach's name and knows Nathan's name, right? And, and says, Nathan, man, when are you gonna write the end of that song? I'm dying to hear the end of that song. The infinity of intimacy that knows our name. So we turn to God and we ask you, Leonard, right? Who was on the Isle of Idra in 1960 in those wild years and the novel that didn't work and in the end wrote Hallelujah, right? And, and it didn't become a song until anyone knew for 15 years later and you wrote 50 versions of it, right? So Leonard, continuity of consciousness, brother, thank you for being in church. Take us all the way inside. We offer our prayer, the holy and the broken. Hallelujah. Yes. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Around the world, together.
For the Lord of song with nothing on my lips but hallelujah and the word hallelujah and we come to the chat box now together the word hallelujah and again you can write the next phrase the word hallelujah means pristine praise when it's gorgeous and beautiful and ecstatic it also means holy loot and holy loot means drunken intoxication it means the brokenness it's the holy right and it's the broken hallelujah and we come to God and we say, oh my God, infinity of intimacy, roomy to the beloved, right? We ask for everything. We ask for our personal needs because prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. And we ask beyond our personal need because we understand that her breath is our breath and no one's ultimately separate. And it's all a love story and we're interconnected and we need each other desperately because to say, I love you is to say, I need you. So we meet in the chat box. And I'll read with your permission, I'll read the prayers and let the first person offer a prayer when we say, I pray for, I pray for, right? What is it for? What am I praying for, right? Anyone, right? We're in the chat box, right? And we actually, each of us, each of us, right? We start and we start with Terry. Terry, brother, I pray that the protesters in Hong Kong be safe, successful and loved and, and just feel Terry, how brave they are, all right? And the young men in Iraq who are protesting because Iraq is now being run by Iranian proxies saying, we want our country back, right? Nathan, I pray for my friend, Juana, right? Juana is aligned with deeper eros, experiencing simplicity and bringing more play in her life. Amen. Hans, brother, right? As you're before holy decisions, right? I pray for clarity, right? Completely with you, right? Medea, 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 Ivan, I pray for everything and everyone. May outrageous love reign on this plane. May we all be reborn as homo amor, right? Medea loves it open, right? And we love it open with our prayer, right? It's closed and we love it open. Kirsten Zohar, I pray for my health and the deepening of outrageous love in my heart and life. Brent, we've missed you, Brent. Where you been, brother? You think we can do this by ourselves? Brent, it's good to see you, right? Oh my God, right? I pray. Be my beloved God, God, be my beloved, my lover, right? My all, Shahati, I pray for all men finding the real natural force, right? I pray, Kirsten, for Hans's health. David, I pray to be deeper intimacy, right? And David, as you, you, you feel the brokenness in certain integral frames that you wrote about the other day, right? Yes, yes, the holy brokenness, brother, right? I feel it with you. I pray to be in deeper intimacy with the beloved, with all the people with their beloved. Veronica, welcome, Veronica. Hold us, Veronica. I pray that I can use my voice to help the church grow, and that Christina receives my email, which sparks an explosion of intimate love and expansion in my life. Hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. Yes, Marianne. Marianne, yes, I pray for harmony in my family after mom's death, right? Yes, 
and harmony for the planet. Yes. Cherry, I pray that all the leaves fall so that I can mulch them into Mother Earth. Shakti and my new focus in working with men and offering all of my feminine energy to support them from my deepest gut. Amen. Yes, Shahati, Clarely, Razi, Red Corsic, I pray for my beloved mother who's struggling with health issues and for all those who are sick and in pain. Yes, Linda, 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 I pray for the full awakening of my being, right? And the end of disease I miscreated. I pray to love myself and all beings, right? To my fullest capacity. Gare, 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 it's so good to see you, right? I pray for deepening gratitude and accepting and loving my life. And Gare, you're holding us and we're holding you, right? And we're together. And Adele, right? Adele, Adele, I pray for all the families of the missing and murdered indigenous women and men who are not learning, right? And the men who are not learning yet to respect and love women who want to share with them to grow healthy children, families, and communities. Amen. Amen. Right, Lynn, I pray for the division in our home country. All communities be united by a shared love and prayer. Amen. Steve, brother, right? I send energy of love to the children who are feeling lost in this adult political drama. We embrace the calling to work fully, right? For a world in which all children thrive. Genuine. I pray to find my home and genuine. Let us, let us have the honor to be in some way also your home and you become home to us. I pray for Hans Simona, right? Simona, Simona, outrageous lover, right? Outrageous lover, poetess, right? Of Eros, Simona, right? Simona, right? Shout hallelujah, Veronica, Claire, praying for my heart to stay open through every crack and break, never not. Right, right, amen. Kirsten, I pray for all of us that we can take our personal and collective crisis as drivers for evolution. Right, Jamie, let me see a couple of new voices, friends. Jamie, I ask to deepen my prayer practice to clarify my heart's desire. Yes, Ronane. Yes, Ronane. I'm waiting for that first draft and we got to talk about the style and structure. I looked at it for sure. Let's do that in the next couple of days for a couple of minutes. For sure, I pray that the crisis of 2019 give birth to unprecedented capacities for love and contribution, right? And so it is. Give me some new names here. Joyce. Joyce, I can feel you in the space and it is so good to feel you as we're just beginning together. Joyce, that we only create more love and through our actions, amen. Jill, Henry and I pray for our friend Bob and his parents, right? I pray for my mother and for all mothers, right? Who, right, who can't help their children, right? Right, Christine, I pray for my daughter Raina that she may find her way through her health challenges, right? Yes, Roxanne, amen. And Roxanne, give us your prayer, sister. Andre, I pray that my brother and sister will get along peacefully. Anneli, I pray for a planetary awakening in love through unique self-symphony. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, blow us open. I pray for the birth of a new, right, right, a new world, right? Zachary, Zachary, I pray that the ideas of separation, difficulty, hate, the, the idea of me apart from you, may all of this disappear in your timeless silence inside your endless love, right? Can you feel that, friends? Right, all the way, Medea, to all the holy prayers. And let's take these prayers and let's literally lift them to the sky. Let's lift them, let's blow them out to the sky. Let's, let's blow it open like we've never loved it open in the world. Right? Every time we pray, we love it open. We pray to the goddess who holds us and we commit to this moment that this church, as if this church was our last church, as if it was our last moment, as if this was our, our last breath. What do we say in our last breath? Right? What did that beautiful girl say? as she's now in her continuity of consciousness. She said, I love you. And we say now I love you to each other. And we love this moment open. And we expand our circle. And every person who's been outside of our circle and every part that's not been connected and everything that's been in some sort of ultimate separation and every split off part of ourselves, we bring together and we raise it up and we entwine it in love. And we love this moment open. And we turn to each other and we say, Avicii, we say, hey brother, Hey, sister. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Right? There's nothing for you that I wouldn't do. And we're going to go to Avicii and we're going to pray this Avicii prayer. And then we're going to go to Barbara, who's going to give us a gorgeous exercise, right? And loving it open. We're going to take our next step. So feel it with me. Let's raise it and lift it up. Lift us all up like prayers to the sky. And Avicii, Christina Amlon, take us inside. Kirsten, take us inside all the way. Right? My brother, my sister, there's nothing for you. Right, wow. Wow, hey brother, hey sister, right? There's nothing for you I wouldn't do. Barbara, beloved, right? Take us the next step. Let's take this code, 
our crisis is a birth, right? And take it the next step. Zohar, you ready? You gonna take us in? Are we ready? Are we ready to go? Here we go. Barbara, beloved, yes. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes, yes, and, and sort of yes, and maybe yes, and could be. I do love it open. And you know what? It is opening when we love it open. And as I was preparing today, I was thinking about our crisis is a birth and to open the circle and let everybody in. And I started to do a, an exercise I want to share with you to start opening the circle with people you might know but really dislike personally. So let's open the circle, everybody, and if you can find somebody that you have not liked, that you've thought been mean or cruel or lying or cheating or stealing, open the circle and let them in and see them in the light of the person who is yearning and longing for more love. Just see them that way. And then let's open the circle wider and see if we can bring the political situation in. <laughs> Let's see if we could bring the Democrats and the Republicans in and try to feel into those Democrats, those candidates now, they're giving their lives to try to beat Trump for good reason. And they're all being hit back really in, in very difficult ways. And then they're trying not to hit back. So let's say that one of them goes up and says, you know what, as a Democrat, I'm opening my, my, my mind, my eyes, and my arms, and I'm letting them all in. <laughs> and I, we're all humans, we're on one planet, and makes the most gracious, amazing speech where all these divisions that are fabricated in order to win and do come from different points of view, all of which have some good to them. So I'm seeing the next level of political leadership. Open our arms and let them all in and actually bring them into the holy hallelujah of the spirit of the evolutionary church the spirit of the evolutionary love that's going through actually everybody, even the worst criminals and, and culprits of our society. So I'm, I'm conjecting up out of our holy church, a holy opening up of our uh, arms so wide that as we're going into this political situation and moment, we've let them all in and we're playing a role that actually nobody is fully playing on this planet. It's not just forgiving people. You know, in the end, they say in the, in the, in the New Testament that, that forgiveness goes quantum and everything forgives everything else and they can't stop forgiving. So we, we see we're at the end times. This is either we go down into catastrophe through climate change and resource depletion and species extinction, or we're going up towards evolution of a new world. And we happen to be the culture on the cusp of that. And what hasn't happened yet is any of us have had the power to step out there and open our, our, wide, our arms so wide and let everybody in. And as we, see, as we do that, imagine all of those who are outside our global circle being included. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Feel as you do this, your power as an evolutionary lover. Feel, you know, that beautiful phrase in, in one of Mark's writings, God needs me. I am needed. I am unique. I am recognized. I am adored. That's my favorite one. I am adored by the God that's the creator of, uh, of us all. So if we walk out into this planetary system with the power of an agent of planetary evolution, 
we have crossed over, we're on the other side of the breakdown into the, into, we are breaking through, and feel the church of evolutionary love as the place that takes us the next step on the evolutionary spiral. Can you imagine a way of loving and communicating and experiencing God's love so deeply that we would be able to do actually what Jesus did when he was crucified. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And he was killed. And then there was Saturday. And Mark and my favorite day in the whole story is Saturday <laughs> in the tomb of metamorphosis. Nobody really says, what happened on Saturday? Well, Mark, we are on Saturday now. This is Saturday. This we is are love. We are on Saturday. We're on Saturday. We, I, and we actually are. <laughs> That's right. We, we actually, are. But, you know, I never thought of the church being a Saturday church. We need to really acknowledge that this very moment. The Saturday church is the church of metamorphosis. Because Friday, is, and the crucifixion is what's happening worldwide as people are destroying each other, destroying the, plan, the climate and the planet and each other. And then in here is, Father, they forgive them. They know not what they do. Let's all be in the Saturday church. You know, I don't think we really have put forward that metaphoric meaning that the Saturday church is the church of the metamorphosis of each other and of humanity toward Sunday, the resurrection from the dead. And what is that resurrection? When Jesus reappeared and Mary saw him, I knew it was true. I mean, I have the resurrection in my soul. I feel the resurrection as a living potentiality in myself and everyone. And I feel the metamorphosis as what, if I could just take a jump here, how does the self-organizing universe organize the universe? It doesn't show up at all. You never see it. <laughs> there are no big statues to the self-organizing universe. <laughs> but what is the self-organizing universe? From the Big Bang all the way on up through the quarks, the electrons. It's the interior of evolution that is in this most awesome ability of bringing separate parts together to be ever more whole. Now, I am declaring that the Saturday church is the church of the self-organizing universe. <laughs> and in the church of the self-organizing universe, we call upon the self-organizing power that has been able to go from quarks to us to take us the next step to open our arms wide enough in this church to let them all in, all the deplorables, including ourselves, all the deplorables. There are no more deplorables, Mark, as you said. There are no more deplorables. Amen. We've let them all in. Hallelujah, sisters. Speak the word. On the other side, and we are dedicating the evolutionary church, the church of the Saturday, transformation of humanity through the evolution of love, creativity, and awareness of how the self-organizing universe actually works. So with that, Mark, I am really declaring something extraordinarily important, that as we provide resources for this church, we're providing resources for the internal metamorphosis of ourselves, number one, person by person, everybody in this church. We are also then declaring that this evolutionary church is itself entering into the metamorphosis process, which means as a culture, 
we haven't quite recognized what it would be like to, to take on internally everybody in here that the metamorphosis of the Saturday church is affecting every one of our lives now. So that together, as we, we bring ourselves ever more close together, we will understand the resurrection of our culture by being that ourselves. And we have, with all our high technology, lo, he was here, and lo, he was there. Lo, I'm in Sunrise, and lo, Mark is in Portland. How did that happen? Lo, he was here, and lo, I was here. We're all, we, we are given the power, by the way, through our high technology, op, used operationally for the metamorphosis of our species, from the dying humans to the evolving humanity. I declare the church of Saturday to be the church of the metamorphosis of humanity. And I would like to say that- and people make a contribution to I love to it. Every single uh, month, I was hoping. <laughs> every single month, I contribute one thousand dollars to this church, and I would like to Yay. see anybody who can match me. Do I have to be going my metamorphosis all by myself here? This is not easy for me, but I would like anybody who wants to join with me in raising or offering $1,000 a month to this church so we can put our websites up, we can put our voices out, and we can convene humanity for the transformation and metamorphosis of our species. We have to get this call out. Is this right, folks? You can put your, your contributions. I want to see one more $1,000 contribution come in other than my own. There is no reason you why know, you Barbara, how about, how about how about five more? Ten five more. There is not Ten right. There is not right that one eighty-eight year old congregational woman should be the only ones doing this. Okay, everybody. You want to say any final word before I have to leave you because I have another date. Oh my God, friends, 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 friends. Right. Brett, thank you. Thank you, Brenton. That's gorgeous and beautiful. And I want to invite everyone. We've got like, wow, three more minutes. Everyone to be able to contribute. And Barbara laid down a challenge. And the challenge was, wow, right? I'm matching Barbara, right? We need a few more people to match. $20, $50 a month, right? As a regular contribution to $1,000 a month or $500 a month, if you can. And there are people who are listening right now who actually can. 1,000% can. Right? That contribution is how we lift this church. Right? We're putting up because one person stepped forward, this fabulous new website right? as of January 1. And then we want to pour resources, not into salaries, right? not at all, not into infrastructure in that way, but to infrastructure in the heart of the source code of reality itself, using Facebook ads, using other modes of communication to actually take the church, the one church, many paths, one mountain, to take this new story, to take this Da Vinci moment and to love reality open at this moment between dystopia and utopia. So never again will there be a child out of breath suffocating because they're being transported to freedom by an abusive commodifying merchant who forgot that they were human beings, right? And it's not just that one child, that one child is exponentialized all over the world, right? We're in a moment where our crisis could be a birth, that's our code. Our crisis could evolve us to create literally heaven on earth, right? Politics and love, right, need to come together. We're creating a politics of love. We're beyond church and state, but politics and religion need to come together, re -liguerre. No one's left out. So here's our last second as we do our last chant. You ready? One, two, three. Our crisis is a birth. Every crisis is a crisis of intimacy. It's a crisis of eros. We need to find deeper and new ways to love each other. And that means new models of relationship, which transcend and include the best of the old models. It means relationship is not a win-lose metrics, right? I'm in because everybody else is out. No, that means I'm not really in the circle, right? I'm only in because everyone else is out. So that's my illusion of being in. I'm in because I'm in. I'm not in because you're out. 
right? Every country, right, is a unique self-symphony. Every religion, every country plays an instrument in the unique self-symphony. Every religion plays an instrument in the unique self-symphony. Everyone, right, is actually uniquely, gorgeously needed. Reality needs your service. Reality needs my service. Reality desperately needs the one church, many paths, one mountain, to actually explode in reality. There's got to be 100,000, and there's got to be 200,000. There's got to be a million, and there's got to be literally without exaggeration. How many yoga studios are there in the world? How many yoga studios? Thousands and thousands. There have to be literally, here's the vision, thousands of evolutionary churches with tens of millions, a billion people around the world, literally in evolutionary churches that are linked to each other, that create a synergy engine, a cascading web, a cascading activation of the self-organizing universe. So here it is. Are you ready to get the Dharma? When we create an evolutionary church right, around the world, which is actually linked and connected, which is linking and matching needs and resources, which is actually stepping in. We are actually an expression, the expression, the leading edge of, of what? Of the self-organizing universe itself. So when I ask and I say, wow, someone, when Barbara asked, Barbara just said, match me $1,000 a month. Or if you can do $20 a month or $50 a month, but do it, step up, because each step takes the next step. If you sit passively, and you just watch as a spectator to time and existence, the next step's not taken, right? Literally, imagine the following. Everything hangs in balance. If the world is precisely poised on the scales 50-50, and your next decision, your next action, right, which emerges from your will, tips the balance to the next step, right? You step up, and then we take the next step together as the one church, reclaiming love as a religion, and then we take the next step, and then it expands, then the next step happens. But if you don't take the next step, right? My brother, my sister, there's nothing for you I wouldn't do. Then the next step won't be taken. Right? The reality is you are evolution, and I am evolution, and we can only do it together. There's only one question. The question is, how deep is your love? That's the question. How deep is your love? Right? Are we ready? Can we take it all the way? Christina Amelon, take us inside. Kirsten Zohar, take us inside. How deep is your love? Week 159, all the way. How deep is your love? Oh my God.